हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम गौरव कुमार जैन फ्रॉम जामिया हमदर्द न्यू दिल्ली द टाइटल ऑफ द मॉड्यूल इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ड्रग डिस्कवरी एंड डेवलपमेंट अंडर पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट पार्ट वन द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर स्टेप वाइज प्रोसेस इन्वॉल्व इन ड्रग डिस्कवरी फ्रॉम अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ डिजीज टू लीड ऑप्टिमाइजेशन सेकेंड टेक्निक्स दैट प्ले रोल इन ड्रग डेवलपमेंट थर्ड step wise process involved in drug development from pre formulation to manufacturing and fourth importance of pre clinical and clinical studies in drug development drug discovery and development process aims to make available new pharmacological interventions to prevent treat or cure diseases in a safe and effective manner the idea for developing new drug can come from a myriad of sources including the current necessities of the market new emerging diseases academic clinical research and from the commercial sector it may take many years to build up a supporting evidence before selecting a drug for drug discovery program drug development start with a target identification and validation followed by drug candidate discovery and selection and optimization of lead drug that is compound with favorable safety efficacy and pharmacokinetic profile preclinical efficacy pharmacology toxicology and mechanistic studies using in silico methods which are computational methods in vitro animal or human tissues and in vivo animals are carried out for lead compound subsequent to preclinical evaluation and investigational new drug called as ind application is submitted to the regulatory agency summarizing all preclinical data along with a rationale for the proposed clinical study and a clinical study design clinical studies commence after approval by the regulatory agency and by the local institutional review board drugs emerging from these trials with appropriate evidence of safety and efficacy are submitted for marketing approval via nda called as new drug application following a review and approval by the regulatory agency the drug can then be marketed and enters phase 4 or post marketing monitoring the steps involved in drug discovery and development are shown in figure Recent estimates suggest that it take up 12 to 15 years and cost in excess of dollar 1.5 billion to bring a new drug to the market. This number incorporates the cost of failures of the thousands of compound that may be screened and assessed early in the R&D process. Only a few of which will ultimately receive approval. The likelihood that a drug entering clinical testing will eventually be approved is estimated to be less than 12% the science involved in drug discovery and development is difficult and the failure risk are higher while these numbers are intimidating a deeper understanding of the rigorous r&d process can explain why so many compounds do not make it and why it takes such a lengthy effort to get a new drug to patients in view of this there is a growing effort and urgency to find new approaches aiming to decrease attrition and increase success in drug development in this module we will understand the process of drug discovery along with the stages and process involved in product development which are then detailed in subsequent modules of the paper product development part 1 and 2 let's begin with the drug discovery process The first step in drug discovery process is to understand the disease to be treated and to unravel the underlying cause of the condition. In these studies, scientists try to understand how the genes are modified, how that affects the protein they encode and how those protein interact with each other in living cells, how those affected cells change the tissue and they are in and finally how the disease affects the patient. This knowledge is the basis for treating the disease. Usually, researchers from industry, government, and academia contribute to this knowledge base. However, even with new technologies, this research takes many years of work and too often lead to annoying dead ends. 
and even if the research is fruitful, it will take many more years of work to turn this basic understanding of what causes a disease into a new treatment. The next step in drug discovery process is target identification. After understanding the underlying cause of a disease, scientists select a target for a potential new medicine. A target is a broad term which can be applied to a range of biomolecules including proteins, genes or RNA involved in a particular disease. A good target needs to be efficacious, safe and druggable that is one that can interact with the putative drug molecule and upon binding elect a biological response which may be measured both in vitro and in vivo. Phenotypic screening and data mining using bioinformatics approach are usually used for identification of potential disease target. The next step in drug discovery process is target validation. After choosing a potential target, scientists must show that it actually is involved in the disease and can be acted upon by a drug. Target validation is vital in help scientists to avoid research paths that look encouraging but ultimately leads to dead ends. Target validation techniques range from in vitro tools through the use of animal models to modulation of a desired target in patients. Antisense technology, transgenic animals, monoclonal antibodies and chemical genomics are examples of few excellent target validation tools. Antisense technology utilizes RNA-like chemically modified oligonucleotides designed to be complementary to a region of target mRNA molecule. Transgenic animals allows observation of phenotypic endpoints to elucidate the functional consequence of gene manipulation. Monoclonal antibodies interact with the larger region of the target molecule surface allowing for better discrimination between even closely related targets and often providing higher affinity. Recently, chemical genomics, which is defined as the study of genomic responses to chemical compounds has emerged. It brings together diversity-oriented chemical libraries and high information content cellular assays along with the informatics and mining tools necessary for storing and analyzing the data generated. The ultimate goal of this approach is to provide chemical tools against every protein encoded by the genome. Good target identification and validation enables increased confidence in the relationship between target and disease and allow us to explore whether target modulation will lead to mechanism-based side effects. The next step in drug discovery is selection of lead compound. Armed with the understanding of the disease and the target identification, scientists are ready to begin looking for a promising molecule called as HIT that could act on their target to alter the disease course. If successful, over long odd and years of testing, the lead compound can ultimately become a new drug. There are several ways to find a lead compound. The first one is nature. Until recently, scientists usually turn to nature to find interesting compounds for fighting disease. For example, moldy plants and bacteria found in soil both lead to important new treatments. Nature still offers many useful substances, but now there are other ways to approach drug discovery. The next approach is de novo. In this approach, scientists can create molecules from scratch. By using sophisticated computer modeling, they can predict what type of molecule may work. The next approach is high throughput screening. This process is the most common way that leads are usually found. Advances in robotics and computational power allow researchers to test thousands of compounds against the target to identify. Based on the results, several lead compounds are usually selected for further study. The last way to find a lead compound is by biotechnology. Scientists can also genetically engineer living systems to produce disease-fighting biological molecules. High throughput and other compounds screens are developed and run to identify molecules that interact with the drug target. Chemistry programs are run to improve the selectivity potency and physiochemical properties of the molecule. 
and data continue to be developed to support the hypothesis that intervention at the drug target will have efficacy in the disease state. Once a number of hits have been obtained from virtual screening or high throughput screening, the first role for the drug discovery team is to try to define which compounds are the best to work on. The next phase in the initial refinement process is to generate dose response curves in the primary assay for each hit, preferably with a fresh sample of the compound. With reliable dose response curves generated in the primary assay for the target, the stage is set to examine the surviving hits in a secondary assay if one available for the target of choice. This need not be an assay in a high throughput format but will involve looking at the effect of the compound in a functional response, for example, in a secondary messenger assay or in a tissue or cell based bioassay. Activity in this setting will give reassurance that compounds are able to modulate more intact systems rather than simply interacting with the isolated and often engineered protein used in the primary assay. After selection of lead compound, the next step is early safety test. Lead compounds go through a series of tests to provide an early evaluation of the safety of the lead compound. Absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicological properties of each lead compound is tested. Successful drugs must absorb into the bloodstream, distribute it to the proper site of action in the body, metabolize efficiently and effectively, successfully excrete it from the body and demonstrate it to be non-toxic. These studies help researchers prioritize lead compounds early in the process. Early safety studies are performed via computational models in living cells and in animals. After early safety test, the next step is lead optimization. Lead compounds that survive the initial screening are then optimized. The aim of this stage of the work is to refine each hit series to try to produce more potent and safe compounds which possess pharmacokinetic properties adequate to examine their efficacy in any in vivo models that are available. Properties of the compound can be changed by changing the structure of a compound. For example, compounds can be made less likely to interact with other chemical pathways in the body, thus reducing the potential for side effects. Hundreds of different analogues of the initial leads are made and tested. The team of biologists and chemists work concurrently. The biologists evaluate the analogues of biological system while the chemists take this information to make additional alterations. The compound that successfully passes is the candidate drug. Typically, the work consists of intensive SAR investigations around core compound with measurements being made to establish the magnitude of activity and selectivity of each compound. This needs to be carried out systematically and where structural information about the target is known, structure-based drug design techniques using molecular modeling, X-ray crystallography and NMR can be applied to develop the SAR faster and in a more focused way. New technologies such as X-ray crystallography and magnetic resonance imaging along with powerful computer modeling enable scientists to actually see the target in three dimensions and design potential drugs to more powerfully bind to the parts of the target where they can be most effective. This type of activity will also often give rise to the discovery of new binding sites on the target proteins. At the end of several years of intensive work, the discovery phase concludes and the development process begins. After starting with approximately 5000 to 10,000 compounds, scientists now have winnowed the group down to between 1 and 5 molecules called as candidate drugs which will now be studied in animals and humans. The first step in the drug development process is pre-formulation study. Just after the candidate drug is optimized, the researchers begin to think how the candidate drug will be formulated, what will be the route of administration and how will it be manufactured at large scale. 
Before processing the new drug into formulation, series of studies are conducted on drug to determine most suitable and acceptable dosage form. These studies termed as pre-formulation studies include determination of physicochemical properties of drugs such as solubility, partition coefficient, dissociation constant, lipophilicity and dissolution. Determination of solid state properties including polymorphism, particle size, density, flow, compression property and hygroscopicity and determination of stability and compatibility of candidate drug with excipients which might be useful in formulation development. The critical assessment of physicochemical properties together with stability and compatibility of drug helps in deciding the most suitable formulation and route of administration for the lead compound. The pre-formulation studies usually run in parallel. With one or more optimized compound in hands, the next step is to test them extensively to determine if they should move on to testing in humans. These studies are called as preclinical studies. Preclinical testing involves in vitro and in vivo tests. In vitro tests are experiments conducted in the lab, usually carried out in test tubes and beakers and in vivo studies are those in living cell cultures and animal models. The objective of these studies is to understand how the drug works and what is its safety profile. From regulatory perspective, extremely thorough testing is needed before the candidate drug can be studied in humans. The preclinical studies must provide detailed information on preliminary efficacy toxicity, pharmacokinetics and safety. After preclinical testing, the findings are reviewed and decided whether the drug should be tested in people. After preclinical testing, the next step is investigational new drug application. Before any clinical trial can begin, the researchers must file investigational new drug or IND application with the FDA. The application includes the candidate drug's chemical structure, how it is thought to work in the body, results of the preclinical work, a listing of any side effects and manufacturing information. The IND also provides a detailed clinical trial design that outlines how, where and by whom the studies will be performed. The FDA reviews the application to make sure People participating in the clinical trials will not be exposed to unreasonable risk. In addition, all clinical trials must be reviewed and approved by the Institutional Review Board at the hospitals or institutions where the trial will take place. This process includes the development of appropriate informed consent form which has to be signed by all trial participants. It is obligatory for a sponsor company to provide comprehensive regular reports to the FDA and IRB on the progress of clinical trial. To begin with, it is phase 0 clinical trial. The FDA has recently endorsed phase 0 trial also called as microdosing of first in human trials. In these trials, a single subtherapeutic dose is given to 10 to 15 human volunteers to quickly weed out drug candidates that are metabolically or biologically ineffective. Pharmaceutical companies perform phase 0 studies to decide which of their drug candidates has the best pharmacokinetic parameters in humans. After successful phase 0 clinical trials, phase 1 clinical trials are performed. Phase 1 trials are usually conducted with about 20 to 100 healthy volunteers. These trials are primarily designed to assess the safety and tolerability of a drug but the pharmacokinetics and if possible the pharmacodynamics are also measured. The typical phase 1 trial has a single ascending dose design meaning that subjects are dosed in small groups called as cohorts. Each member of a cohort might receive a single dose of the study drug or a placebo. 
a very low dose is used for the first cohort the dose is then escalated in the next cohort if safety and tolerability allows dose escalation is stopped when maximum tolerability is reached single ascending dose studies are usually followed by multiple ascending dose while safety and tolerability are still important endpoints the multiple dose setting often allows first investigations of the pharmacokinetics in addition to the pharmacodynamic effects finally food effect studies are often conducted to investigate the potential impact of food intake on the absorption of the drug after phase 1 trials phase 2 trials are performed phase 2 trials are performed on about 100 to 500 patients and are designed to assess the efficacy of the drug and to continue the phase 1 safety measurements most importantly phase 2 trials help to establish therapeutic dose for the large scale phase 3 trials phase 2 studies are sometimes divided into phase 2a and 2b phase 2a is designed to assess dosing requirements whereas phase 2b focus on drug efficacy the exact design of phase 2 studies depends heavily on the compounds mechanism of action phase 2 studies strive to answer the following questions first is the drug working by the expected mechanism second does it improve the condition in question the optimal dose strength and schedules for using the drug is also optimized and if the drug continues to show promise they prepare for much larger phase 3 trials phase 3 investigates the efficacy of a new drug over 6 to 12 months in a larger patient population of about 1000 to 5000 patients to generate statistically significant data about safety efficacy and the overall benefit risk relationship of the drug This phase of research is key in determining whether the drug is safe and effective. It also provides the basis for labeling instructions to help ensure proper use of the drug. Because of their size and comparatively long duration, phase 3 trials are the most expensive, time-consuming and difficult trials to design and run, especially in therapies for chronic medical conditions. Therefore, drugs that do not show promise results in phase 2 are often not pursued in phase 3 trials in fact only 18% of drugs in phase 2 proceed to phase 3 stage once the phase 3 trials are complete the sponsoring companies analyzes all the data if the findings demonstrate that the experimental medicine is both safe and effective the company files a new drug application to the FDA requesting approval to market the drugs the submission contains preclinical and clinical information obtained during testing including pharmacology and toxicity of the compound human pharmacokinetics and results of the clinical trials as well as information about the chemical makeup manufacturing process and labeling of the new medicine The FDA then scrutinizes all the data to determine if the medicine should be approved. In particular, it uses the information in the NDA to try to address three major concerns. First, because no drug has zero risk, the FDA must determine whether the benefits of the drug outweighs the risk. Second, based on its assessment of risk and benefit the fda must decide what information the package insert should contains to guide physicians in the use of new drug finally the fda must assess whether the methods used to manufacture the drug and ensures its quality are adequate to preserve the drug's identity strength and purity following rigorous reviews the fda can either approve the medicine or send the company an approvable letter requesting more information or studies before approval can be given or deny the approval after fda approval the next step is manufacturing going from a small scale to large scale manufacturing is a major undertaking each facility must meet 
strict FDA guidelines for good manufacturing practices. Making a high quality drug compound on a large scale takes great care. In the paper Product Development Part 1 and 2, we have discussed the design, formulation approach, manufacturing and evaluation of various dosage forms. After successful manufacturing, Phase 4 clinical trials begin. Phase 4 trials are also known as post-marketing surveillance trials involving safety surveillance or pharmacovigilance and ongoing technical support after approval. Phase 4 studies may be required by regulatory authority or may be undertaken by the sponsoring company for competitive purposes or other reasons. Phase 4 trials can be set up to evaluate long-term safety or how new medicine affects a specific subgroup of patients. Candidate drug that shows promise early in the development process is patented by the company. Patenting prevents other companies copying it for 20 years and covers many aspects of the intellectual property of a drug, including its formulation, manufacture and in some cases its use. The purpose of a patent is to enable the company that developed it to recoup their development cost and to make a profit to cover the developmental cost of the drugs that failed during the testing process as well as to invest in the development of future innovative drugs. By the time a drug has undergone required testing and been licensed, half the patent period will usually have expired. Once a patent on a drug has expired, generic versions of the drug can be manufactured and marketed. The discovery and development of new medicine is a long, complicated process. Each success is built on many, many prior failures. Advances in understanding human biology and diseases are opening up exciting new possibilities for breakthrough medicines. At the same time, researchers face great challenges in understanding and applying these advances to the treatment of disease. These possibilities will grow as our scientific knowledge expands and becomes increasingly complex. Research-based pharmaceutical companies are committed to advancing science and bringing new medicines to patients. Thank you.